In this episode of The Civil Engineering CEO, which is our 10th episode, we are going to provide you with the top 10 takeaways from our previous episodes on The Civil Engineering CEO. These episodes featured CEOs from leading civil engineering firms, and because they shared such insightful information, we thought it would be great to recap some of those key pieces of advice and share them with you here. Now, before I dive in, a quick word from our sponsor, Big Time. Oh my God, this is amazing. I love it. Got it. Wow, Dave, this is amazing. This is really, really cool. The software is great. I honestly, I love this program. These are the real reactions of big time customers when they first toured the software. Big time gives engineering firms the visibility they need to operate more efficiently and maximize profits. From project creation to client payments, big time streamlines operations with intuitive budgeting, project management, and invoicing solutions. Schedule your tour of the number one rated professional services automation software at bigtime.net. Let's jump into our 10 key takeaways from civil engineering CEOs. Number one, Always be thinking about how you can increase your value to your company. In episode number one, I talked to Kevin Haney, PE, the president and chief executive officer for Collier's Engineering and Design, formerly Mazer Consulting. Kevin recommended that all civil engineers should always be thinking about how they can increase their value to their companies. Your value is essentially all you have in your career. How valuable are you? Here is something that Kevin said that really stood out to me. You can't equate your value to the organization to your title in the organization. A title means nothing. Somebody's value to an organization is based upon the duties you perform, the skill sets you have, and the ability to not only impact the bottom line, but grow other people. That's the value. So I ask you, what value do you offer to your firm and how can you increase it? Number two, encourage diversity and inclusion in your engineering teams. Our second takeaway is from episode number two, where I talked to Dave DeLiza, PE, President and Chief Executive Officer of Pannoni. Dave talked about how important both diversity and inclusion are to a company, but more than that, how important they are to engineering teams. Dave talked about how if your engineering team lacks diversity, its perspective and vision will be limited. Is your team's vision limited? How can you change that? Number three, civil engineering cannot be automated. Our third takeaway is from episode three, where I talked to Anya O'Dwyer, principal and CEO of Innovate Engineering, about why navigating change in the civil engineering industry is so important. We talked specifically about the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which is going to bring a lot more complex infrastructure projects to civil engineers in years to come. Many people feel that software and AI will be critical to executing these projects. And while that's true to some degree, Anya reminded us that civil engineering is a people profession. Regardless of the software available, you will need to interact with people, lead people, influence people. So I ask you, how are you preparing yourself to do that? Number four, servant leadership is powerful in engineering. Moving on to our fourth takeaway, which was from episode four, where I talked with Ori Elihu, president and CEO at NGO, about how they utilize servant leadership and what it's like to work at a company that employs it. Ori said, as leaders, our job is to serve, and we measure our individual successes by the growth and success of the people we serve. I totally agree with Ori's philosophy of leaders serving the people they lead. You have to care about those people you lead. You have to make sure that they're clear on and that they achieve their career goals. How are you doing that with your team? Number five, trust in the workplace is critical to company growth. Takeaway five is from episode five, where I talked to Iris Leia Laurel, PE CEO at Capital Engineering and Consultants, about the importance of building trust in the workplace and how it really means everything when you're growing a company. Iris said, I've always strongly believed that a company can't grow without people working in it who have the skills to delegate. 
being able to delegate takes the ability to trust. If you don't trust your team members, you won't be able to delegate work to them. And therefore, as a leader, you will not get to work on those higher level visionary tasks that you need to focus on to grow your firm. So I ask you, how can you build trust within your team and your firm as a whole? Number six, staying calm when things get hectic is an action great leaders take. The sixth takeaway is from episode six, where I talk with Jim Salvito, president and CEO at MNS Engineers. The last few years have presented many challenges for the civil engineering industry that showed no signs of slowdown throughout the entire COVID-19 pandemic. We asked Jim how he remained a calming voice for his employees through all of the ups and downs. And Jim said the following, when a situation arises that could be an emotional reaction trigger, I just take time. I sit back and I don't react. I think about the various parameters of that situation and what the response should be in a way that's going to come across as the best decision for our organization. And I'll have some thought points that I'll convey as a result of that action and decision. So how do you react in stressful situations? What approach can you take to stay calm as your team will feed off your reaction? Number seven, Help your team move on from mistakes. Takeaway number seven is from episode seven, where I talked to Ron Wathen, PE, president at QK, formerly Quad Kanaf, about the importance of keeping a company connected and how engineering leaders and managers can really keep their team connected and ensure that emotional well-being, even at the time of this virtual work world. Ron said that one of the most important things that you could do as a leader is to help your team when they make a mistake. Help them work through it, help them learn from it, but then help them to move on. They need to know that everyone makes mistakes and that you eventually have to move on and not keep some kind of baggage as a result of that mistake. If you can do this, you will build trust with your team and they will be comfortable working with you. Number eight, prioritize both your clients and employees. Takeaway number eight is from the episode where I talked with Joanna Gessner, CEO and co-founder at Gessner Engineering, about how she takes a high-impact approach to building a successful firm by focusing on what matters most. Johanna talked about how, as a firm leader, focusing on the client and employee experience are two critical components of building a successful civil engineering firm. I like to refer to them as your two biggest clients, your employees and your customers. And I think it's really important because when a firm's leadership puts the customer over the employee, things usually don't work out well. So how are you prioritizing your employees just as you are your customers? Number nine, develop and communicate a core philosophy. Our ninth takeaway is from our most recent episode where I talked with Matt Hoying, PE President and Project Manager at Choice One Engineering, about succession planning and how you can plan for the next generation of civil engineering leaders at your firm. Matt talked about how every company should have a mission, vision, and values that they are communicating with their employees, which is critical for growing the firm long term. In most Mm -hmm. firms, the employees can't even tell you what the company's vision or mission is. Can your employees? At EMI, we operate around our core values, give, guide, and grow. We give our all, we guide each other, and we grow together. Make it easy for your team members to rally around a core philosophy. Number 10, there is one common denominator in leadership. Lastly, I'm going to give you one more takeaway that is my own takeaway from conducting these interviews. While there is no equation for being a great leader, in civil engineering, there does seem to be one common denominator, people. Civil engineers who are great leaders are able to relate with, influence, inspire, and lead people, not just projects. How can you improve your ability to lead people? I hope you enjoyed our video for today. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers become better managers and leaders. Please subscribe here so that we can help you engineer your own success. I'll see you next week.